Hello everybody and welcome. In today's video, we're going to learn how to install an SSH server on Ubuntu 20.04. However, we're going to do it using Docker Desktop for Windows. So if you don't already have Docker Desktop for Windows installed or the Windows subsystem for Linux, you can go ahead and start that process. I have a series on Docker and I have a video on how to install WSL with Docker Desktop and you can find it right about there. Let's begin. First thing I'm gonna do, I have Docker installed, I have Docker Desktop installed, everything is running, and I have it all set up so that I can access it through an actual Ubuntu 20.04 Linux subsystem setup. So here I am on 20.04, and if I do a Docker images, I can see that I have the latest Docker um, Ubuntu image, and I'm ready to begin my process. So purposefully, this is going to be a clean installation, so we're going to start right from scratch. Okay, so I'm going to do a Docker run. I'm going to remove the container when it exits so that it's gone and off my system. I'm going to start up the Docker container in interactive mode with the terminal. I'm going to do something special here. I'm going to go, I'm going to assign the local host to port 8022 from the local host to the actual Docker container. I'm going to give the Docker container a name just for ease. I'm going to run Ubuntu latest and I'm going to have it run bash on startup. So with all of that put in, I hit enter and I should get a prompt and we're ready to go. So clearing the screen, the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do a app get update. Now, if you are on a non, if you're not on a container, uh, you might need to use sudo. So you'll put in sudo and then you'll put your root password in, or you can sudo su first and then you can issue all the commands uh, as root. But as a, on the container, we're, we're going to be utilizing root. Okay, the update is done. Clear the screen. So here I'm going to do an app get. Now on a non-Docker system, you might want to put a dash Y so you're not prompted every time to say yes to install things. I'm going to install OpenSSH server. I'm going to install Vim so that I have an editor to use. You can install Nano here if you wanted to. Nano. I like Vim. I'm going to actually install SSH as well. And I'm going to install the Ubuntu firewall as well. And let that go. I'll pause the video here and come back when it's done. Returning to the setup, during the installation, it's asking me a couple of questions. So I wanted to show it here. It's asking me for a geographic area. So I'm going to put in America. That's where I'm at. And I am in New York. So I'm going to put in 105 for my time zone. So 105. OK, the installation completed successfully. I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to update the configuration of our SSH to not utilize the commonly known port 22 that SSH runs on. I'm going to put it on an upper level port above 1024 for security purposes. So the way I do that is I'm going to use VI. You can use Nano, which we installed at the beginning. I'm going to do go to the SSH update. SSH D underscore config file. Come down to this port here, open it up, and pop in here 8022 instead. I'm going to save the file and clear the screen. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to open up the port 8022 that we had ported from our local system to the container when we started up this container, I want to go ahead and open that up on this firewall here. So I'm going to do an uncomplicated firewall. I might have called it Unix firewall or Ubuntu firewall earlier. That was a mistake. Um, and then I'm going to say allow 8022. And that rule has been updated. We're good to go here. And the next thing I'm going to do is clear the screen. 
we're going to go ahead and we're going to start up the SSH service. So I'm going to do a system or enable it. So we're going to do a system CTL enable SSH. And that's complete. Then we'll do a system CTL start SSH. And we get an error, which says that uh, we need to use the init system here. So instead, we'll do a slash etsy init.d ssh start. And good. So we now have our SSH started. So now we're going to create the SSH keys, the public key to place on the server and the private key to put on our clients. We do this by typing in SSH keygen, and we're going to add a bit size of 4096 just to keep it nice and secure. Now it's going to ask me, what do I want to call the file? I'll keep it at default as ID underscore RSA. It's going to ask for a passphrase. I'm going to put in a passphrase. I'm going to put a nice simple one and confirm it. And I'm done. I now have an RSA key that is 4096 bits, nice and secure. I'll now go ahead and display with a cat from my home directory and it does dot SSH that ID RSA key that we just created. I do that again by doing a, I went a little bit fast there. I went to the home directory and I went into the dot SSH where that key was created and put and placed and I cataloged the file. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this whole entire file and copy it to my clipboard. Dragging over my desktop, I'm going to right click and do a new text file. I'll call it private key. When I open it up, I'm going to paste in that private key. I'm going to make sure that I have the end uh, comment down here with the dashes and the beginning comment at the top, the dashes. We're all good there. I'm going to save the file. I can close this out and I can move this away. Here I'll clear the screen to make it nice and clean. So what we want to do now is we want to to um, cat out our from our local directory SSH. We want to cat out rsa.pub file and we want to pipe it into authorized keys. Now we have that as an authorized key on our system. Uh, what I'll do is I'll up arrow here and just show you that if I just hit enter, you'll see what the key looks like. And you can see that at the bottom, I have the container uh, pretty much identical to this, the container name and the, the uh, root user. The next thing that we need to do, because we're on a Windows system, is download PuTTY. Since we're on Windows, we're going to have to do a little manipulation to our private key in order to get this to work and to be able to access our Ubuntu server that's running the SSH daemon. So I opened up uh, Google here and I typed in download Google for Windows. I choose it and I want to download PuTTY. I'll grab it from here. And best bet is, first of all, since we're um, running Ubuntu 2004, you need to be at a version. I forgot what version you need to be, but this version here is the best because it's available as of this video. So I'm going to go ahead and download the 64-bit MSI file. That'll download. I'll pause the video, run it through a quick check for viruses and malware, and I'll be right back. OK, now I'm ready to install this. So I'm going to grab the MSI file and I'm going to go through the install process. It's installed and we're ready to move on to our next step. Under your start menu, you should find all of the different putty elements. I put them on my desktop just for, for ease. So the first one you want to open up is the putty gen. Double click on it. And we're going to go ahead and open up 
and load our private key file. So if we go and we look for that private key file, you'll see that there's nothing in here. I need to set this to all files to find it. And I grab the private key and I open it up. It's going to ask me for that password. I'll type in the password that I put in when I was putting in the passphrase. And I guess it's a passphrase, not a password. And enter. It successfully imported it. We have all of our information. We're going to save that private key out. We can give it the same name that we gave before, which is private key. But instead, there's going to be no extension because I want it to be saved as a PPK file. And I save it. And we're done. So now I have my private key file, my pen file, and these other files. So let's go ahead and try and access our server now. I think we're all set. So I'm going to, this time I'm going to start up the putty because we're accessing it through Windows. In the host name, I'm going to put in localhost. Because if you remember when we started out, we started the container by pointing port 8022 at our containers port 8022. So that way we can use localhost to actually access the server. So localhost 8022. I'm going to give it a name, docker ssh server demo, and I'll save it. And I'm going to do a couple more little things. I'm going to go over to the connections, and inside there under the data, I'm going to put the name of the user that I'm logging in as, which in our case is root. Go over to the SSH, expand it out, go to the auth, and then we're going to put in our private key. So I'm going to browse for that private key. It's the private key that we put on our desktop earlier that we created. And go back up to the top, save this, and we're ready. Let's see what happens. Okay, it's asking me for my passphrase. And we are in and connected to our container via SSH, and everything is working. I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.